You, you submit things, it's up to you. You attend class, it's all it's up, up to you. you. A four-year degree mm -hmm. um, that is aimed at you know training. The name, the, the method being, they can I take you for lunch after? The things that you say to them, the things that you do to them, have long-lasting impact. Mm -hmm. channel welcome to another segment of tackling careers with Arahone. um i'm back with our first video of actually tackling into the careers and as you guys already saw from the title of the video uh it's a bachelor of education day so we're going to be talking about bachelor of education and as i promised i did say that i will bring the people who specialize in those specific fields today i am with Sindekile Maseko, um who studied bachelor of education and then we're just gonna tackle into that and she's gonna give us information about that First of all, before we get on to it, please subscribe to my channel. Um, click on the notification bell so that when I upload a video, you get a notification. So firstly, I just wanted us to get into your background, what you studied, what you're currently doing, before we get onto everything. If you can just give us that little background. Hi everyone. Um, so as Arohana said, I am Senzeki Lemaseko and I studied a Bachelor of Education degree. Then I went on to do an honors in education management, law and policy, um, only because I didn't want to be stuck within just the teaching position, if I should put it that way. Um, you know, I, I still have plans to further my education so that I can continue climbing up the ladder, if that makes sense. Um, so my Bachelor of Education degree took four years for me to complete, and I did my honors in yeah. Um, so, the first question that I want to ask you, I believe everyone who clicked on this video might have this question as well, is what is Bachelor of Education? For those who don't know, please just give us like a, a basic description of what Bachelor of Education is. So a Bachelor of Education is a four-year degree mm -hmm. um, that is aimed at you know training um, future teachers um, and you would have about three focused areas starting with either um, foundation phase, intermediate phase, um, senior or FET phase. So okay. you then get trained to teach in those specific education areas. All right. I think you already like kind of gave it uh, an answer to what I'm about to ask. What it allows you to do. Unless if you have any other information to add onto that on what it allows you to do, the Bachelor of Education itself. Um, I think uh, not necessarily, but it, it does allow you to. Uh, teach the different age groups in, in, in simple. I think what they are to simplify it so it allows you to teach based on the one that you studied to teach a specific age group, such as you know the foundation phase, yeah. which is the preschool to the primary preschool to grade three, um, yeah. because primary ends at around grade seven, mm -hmm. or the intermediate phase, grade four to grade seven, or senior phase. 8 and 9 or FET which is the 10 to 12 and further. Um, why did you choose education? Why were you a grade 12 child and say you decided that okay I'm choosing education was this your first choice or you had other options why are you why did you choose Bachelor of Education? Maybe let me say it chose me. <laughs> it chose you. <laughs> yeah I, I, initially in back in Metric, I honestly didn't yeah. have a specific study focus or area that I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I didn't know at the time was that I wanted to work with young people. Okay. Where and how, what was that big question mark. Mm -hmm. So I explored a couple of options and for some reason every time I explored an option it always led me towards the education side, you know, studying rather a Bachelor of Education. Mainly also because within the education space there's also other things that you can start, like a, 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 a more in varsity that is. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you actually get exposed to other fields, other study options mm -hmm. through education. For example, um, in my search to studying, to want to work with young people, yeah. psychology was one of the options. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do psychology mm -hmm. um, under, the, under the B.Ed. 
okay. side of things. But did you know that when you're in grade 12, like when did you know that you'll be able to no. do all these things or <laughs> something? You realized, oh, I can do this with this. Honestly, I didn't know. And had it not been because I had a friend back then who was who, who at least had started studying, I think two to three years before I had to start mm -hmm. studying it at university. So, you know, when uh, uh, during some of the chairs, they would be like, no, but why don't you look into doing this? Then you can explore all these different things that you feel that you might want to study. Um, so that's how then I. And then, um, who then applies? Who applies for you? Um, do are the people from university that come and say here the applications? Is there someone assisting you say this is how you apply, or do you just know? Like I just want to. What was happening at that time? <laughs> just <laughs> what was that one that doesn't know at that process? time? <laughs> okay, at that time I yeah. I did everything myself. Mm -hmm. Remember dropping off. Yeah. <laughs> Just to give a background, since and I <laughs> know each other personally, so uh, we did some drop so some things in together. Open day applications. Yeah. yeah. So at that time, I think the info it wasn't the information wasn't readily available. Yeah. Um, we didn't have people coming to our campuses mm -hmm. and telling us these things. The one that I was uh, um, generally fortunate about at that time was I was part of the Alexander Education Committee, so mm -hmm. we had a mini computer lab that could give us access to be able to search for these things mm. but at that time it was mostly paper drop-offs yeah. um, <laughs> unlike now when we everything did. is more online, online yeah. but you had to get the physical application forms fill them in yeah. and drop them off or post them to the university these days the nice thing is you can log on to the UP website, the VIS website or whichever other institution that you want to get go, go to and find the online applications you would just need to be mindful of when they close, which at the moment I know the UP has closed. All right. things, yeah. What um, led you to taking the decision that I'm going to study at the University <laughs> of Victoria? There is University of Northwest, there's University, there's Vitz University. There's a whole lot, a, a lot, there's a whole lot of universities that where you can study education and colleges. I think I'm yeah. not sure, uh, but what led you to saying I'm going to study at the University of Victoria? So I am originally from Anand Victoria, <laughs> even though I left to go study, you know, I think when I was in grade two, is it grade two, eight years? Yeah, so when I was eight, <laughs> I, I went to Joba to, yeah. to, to, to study there. Mm -hmm. um, so coming back was just the thing of maybe let me just be closer to home, mm -hmm. especially because my sister used to complain that they hardly spend time with me. So I need to at least come closer to home for, for some time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but in that as well, I think it was also trying to find closer to home and the best institution yeah. closer to home because there are other um, studies areas, institutions. institutions around here that one can go into. But University of Pretoria is known as one of the best, I think. We've all had that the fight between Vids and UP and UCT. So yeah. You choose to come to, to study at uh, UP. You come to UP. How was it as a first year? Like, generally? not even based on being in education yeah. how is it adapting to the environment from high school first year just how huh? if you still remember how was it for you it was, it was, it was nice <laughs> it was it was a, it was a bit tricky in the beginning yeah. in terms of you know how well, you come from a school setting where there are yes. rules you know a, a set timetable when you need to be at school when you yeah. need to come out then you come to university, the times are just... So you actually start by... I remember we used to make our own timetables. So you'd get a list of when some classes are, and then you'd draw yeah. up. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> so you'd have the, 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 there could be like three options of the, of the same class. Uh, so you can either come through to the 731, okay. especially if there were some of those ones where there's a lot of options. You could yeah. come to the 731, or there could be another one at four. So you'd start with having to first ensure that you understand your own timetable first from understanding your own timetable know that it is up to you to actually attend those lectures mm -hmm. and ensure that you catch up with whatever's going on because no one follows you around no one is telling you that did asking you if you did this or you, you submit things it's up to you you attend class it's all it's up, up to you. you so maybe because i think i've always just been a responsible somebody so it wasn't that difficult to say you know i'm here this is what i need to do um, being alone wasn't a, a new thing as well so it was for me it was just another step that yeah. I needed to take which 
was in Ibukana. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like it's the you know the that first stage that teaches you to uh, to adult that teaches you to adult. I think university is one of those because now you can yeah. see it on your own. You're on your own. You there's no be responsible. You have to do all. There's no school things. principal. <laughs> there's, there's no mom. There's no granny. Yeah. There's no one at home. It's mean, just the you have to be we chased by the principal hey. to go back to class. Okay. This time you're not in class. You're chilling by what is that? Mm. Your own car mm. and those places. Yeah. It's, it's your choice. No one follows you around. So yeah. responsibility. Yeah, becomes a big thing. Responsibility becomes a big thing. Yeah. Okay, now back to education. Um, for someone who doesn't know, what are the requirements? Uh, general APS score. Do you need to have certain subjects that you need to do in order to get into this faculty? What are the requirements for Bachelor of Education? Um, so, one thing disclaimer: um, different some institutions don't. Different institutions will have their own requirements, mm -hmm. but you would need to have the general ones where you would have a um, national senior certificate which is matric grade 12. Oh, so what, is <laughs> what is national senior certificate? Yeah, so you need to have an, a, a national senior certificate, yeah. your matric, mm -hmm. so you need to have passed that. Yeah. Uh, and if you are going to university, you know that because you're, it's, it's Bachelor of Education, yeah. you need to have bachelor's admission to... Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. You need to have yeah. a bachelor's admission to get into a bachelor of education degree. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Then um, the institutions have different APS scores that you need to then take into account. So UP, I think the current APS score for UP is 28. Uh, I'm not sure. Can, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember what yeah. it was back then. But you know what but I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to link, um, if, if possible, I will link the requirements as well yeah. and, um, and how UP to calculate your APS score as well yes. then you can put that link down yeah. so UP is about 28 VET is 36 um, and then you can then check the other ones as well but and life orientation is generally not counted is it not divided by two no Okay, so it's, not UP, it's not counted at all okay. for right. Bachelor of Education. Maybe it might be counted for other things. No, no, I don't think. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Yeah, but for Bachelor of Education at UP, life orientation is not counted. Mm -hmm. But you take, I think the, the APS score is your your grade. So you count, you count, so if you've got, you know, the, 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 level, the, number, the level 5, level 4, level 1, 2, 3, and, oh. and 7 that you get on your metric certificate that shows that if it's a 7, a 6, a 5, or 3, 2, 1, that's what you put together to get your APS score, excluding LO. Okay. I, think, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I think information yeah. will be done below for, so that you can read up yeah. and okay. verify. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we will be not biased, but because we are from the University of Pretoria, <laughs> or my guest, because we, it's not about me, it's about yeah. Bachelor of Education, it's from the University of Pretoria, so most of the information will come from that side. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you are more than welcome to also Google other, uh, other university. Yeah. There's only so much I can give. Yeah, um, yeah. so. A general idea. I think yeah, a general helps. idea yeah. helps of how to calculate these things, how to get this information, and how to to whether there are any requirements or not. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that the Bachelor of Education takes four years to study. What do you do in those four years? First year, second year, even if you don't like give me per details, year, yeah. just a general um, general details of what you do in those four years. Yeah, and I think if I had to get into it each year, <laughs> it, uh, it wouldn't work. <laughs> Especially because so much has changed from the time that I was enrolled at UP. So I was enrolled at UP, let me, I think maybe that would help to give context. Yeah. From the year 2014 until 2017, yeah. for my Bachelor of Education degree, so my undergrad. Mm -hmm. It was from 2014 up until 2017. Yeah. So I know it's like there's been a couple of changes from there. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you have theory and practicals. So, um, Back then, my, my practical, so I had theory for three years yeah. and my practicals in the, in the fourth year mm -hmm. from around June. I do know that now the practicals start from your second year. Second year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but not as long as they would be, as they were from when I was, you know, studying it. So now in the second year, it would be, I think if I'm not mistaken, you can just double check this because it's not yeah. information that I'm clear aware of, but mm -hmm. it would be like about two weeks. Mm -hmm. and not 
uh, like the six months that we, we had to take for, for practicals. So you have theory and practice because you can't get into the workspace without having explored the teaching environment, knowing how to teach, the pedagogies of teaching and so forth. There's a lot that you then need to learn. Understand the theory, then the practice side of things in terms of how you actually can conduct yourself in the classroom. Okay. And then, um, so you finish with your three years and then now you have to do practicals. Mm -hmm. Do you, does the university give you a choice of schools that you go to or do you choose and say, I want to go here? Uh, how does it work? How, how does it work? Does everyone get the opportunity to go yeah. and do those practicals as well? Yeah. Every student that studies the degree gets mm -hmm. the opportunity to do practicals. Yeah. And the whole process, the entire process of doing practicals mm -hmm. is facilitated by the university. So your university would have then when it's time for you to, to go to your practicals, prior to that they would then open up the I think then we call it an application process for mm -hmm. the different schools. Um, so each school would indicate how many students they can take, mm -hmm. for which subjects they can take, mm -hmm. and the duration of course. So then you would then need to go look at the list of schools and pick the school that you would like to to go to for your practicals. If it happens that um, with, well, with us, well, this is what, uh, what happened. If I wanted to, like, let's say maybe I'm, I'm from a different province or town and I wanted to go to my practicals there, yeah. I could talk to the school mm -hmm. so that they give me permission to actually talk to my university for them to allow me to actually go to my practicals at home. So I just need to follow that process so that I get the school working with the university. Okay. But the university does have a list of schools that um, it lists for you to choose from for your practicals. How are your practicals? I've been dying to ask that question. I was thinking about it now. Now when you're talking, I'm just like, how are your practicals? I can just imagine you are so young. You have like 21, 20, and then you're walking into a classroom with people who are just like four years younger than you. Because you, you, you did FET. In actual fact, did we even get into what FET is? Okay. Before we get onto the phases, I just like to know how is the, the practical <laughs> session being a young teacher walking in and then you find students who are like four years younger than you. Yeah. I won't lie, growing up education was mostly for the older yeah. people. Older yeah. people. And now things have changed. Yeah. For the good young people. It's young people teachers. Are not TikTok. <laughs> Yay! People even teach on TikTok. Yeah. They even they even nice. do TikTok no. videos with their students. <laughs> Things have changed about it. A lot. Yeah. So, so how is that? It's no more that rigid. Like now it's like, it's, it's, education has become a lot more fun and entertaining. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was an interesting experience. <laughs> like the first week? Sure. It was, it, it was weird. But for some reason, you know, there's, there, there's something that comes with sort of being in a professional space that even the kids understand that, okay, mm. even though they know that we are student teachers, but I don't know, maybe I can, with, oh, I've been blessed to have been in nicer spaces, but they understand that you are there as their teacher. Mm -hmm. Even though because you are young, you are beautiful, you are, they, some of them feel like they're, you know, somewhere <laughs> your age mates. My especially, <laughs> especially because you chose FED. Yeah. So I remember in, in the first schools when I was teaching, yeah. I was teaching, I think, grade 11. Oh they were tall, I mean tall yeah. kids, yeah. <laughs> you know, all of them would offer to say, ma'am, they might have been there, can I take you for lunch afterwards? <laughs> so, At all. Even grade sevens would be like, you're not leaving until you give us a, you, a picture or a hug. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, it, it, you know, it, it tends to be a bit more difficult if you are a young female and yeah. all those things. But um, besides that, they still have so much respect for you. Mm -hmm. They still treat treat you so beautiful like they will yeah. make sure that you're okay can we help you with this mm -hmm. do you need this mm -hmm. um they even, even the listening like I, I, I never struggled with classroom management yeah. so keeping control and behavior on track um mm -hmm. i didn't have such challenges okay. um, but i know some the other people who might have you know yeah. even some people that i went to do practicals we all had Different experiences, yeah. so the experience won't be the same. And it, I think also the one thing that makes it different for all of us is your own personality and yeah. your way of managing the classroom space. But mine yeah. was, I, I had fun. <laughs> it was well, awesome. that's nice. Yeah. Uh, and to get back to the question that I just, you know, that just came to my mind when we were talking about the experiences, 
Um, there's, in, there's intermediate phase, there's foundation phase, senior phase, but you chose FPT. Yeah. You chose, you left the little babies, you left the intermediate phase, and you said, I want FPT. Why? <laughs> uh, back then, I thought I, I didn't want to work with babies. Yeah. Okay. You thought, okay. I thought. Right. So <laughs> I you thought I didn't want to. I was on, the, on that mindset of I actually want to work with older people that I can have conversations with. Okay. I want to get into a classroom and it is conducted more like a lecture, you mm. know, where I get to engage with them on the same level and not, hello, baby. Um, so at that time, that was the main thing. I just wanted to, I felt the need to just, you know, get into an environment where I can talk to and engage with the much older people. Okay. You said back then, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just leave it here. Okay, and then now you complete um, your degree. Um, now you have to move into the workspace. The workspace, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, how's that change of moving from, I have the degree now, I'm moving the workspace. Please just give me a bit of a background also on how do you apply for this uh, these jobs, yeah. where do you go for both public, private schools? How, how do you go about getting a job? Um, yeah, and also how is it being a new teacher fresh from varsity? So after varsity, um, I decided to apply online for a job. Yeah. Like I, at that time, you know, um, majority of the, 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 some of the things that you can do after you complete to actually start applying is to um, go to the schools directly and do drop-offs, mm -hmm. go to your district to drop off and then they put you on their database. Mm -hmm. Or if some some schools um, also have online um, vacancies and yeah. where, you, where you can apply. Then you also have, um, what's the other one? Where you actually, you know, get like you say, after well, while you're completing your practicals, yeah. um, you get absorbed by the by the school there. So they, those are the various options that are there, you know, online or drop offs or your district. These days, there's even um, online where you can apply if you're an unemployed educator, so that at least when there are vacancies, they can take you from that database. So luckily, there are the databases so that you don't always have to do the physical drop offs, especially because sometimes you might want to go to a different province and yeah. all those things. So you do, you can do it online. That's what I did. So at that time, um, I just searched for schools that I can apply online for, which majority of them at that time were private schools. Yeah. Um, so I started at a private school. Okay. Um, I planned on it, got an interview, um, interview, called for an interview, and that's when my journey started. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I don't know if I should mention, but I, I, I did FET, no? but when I started <laughs> working, <laughs> Um, I actually started at a primary school oh, yes. in foundation phase. Okay. So I remember at that time we used to have that discussion of are you actually allowed to use your FET um, in foundation phase? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it, it applies everywhere, but we used to then have this debate of saying, but if you have an FET, it allows you to go down mm. as, co as, as compared to when you have and ECD, mm -hmm. you can't exactly go to the other phases. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe that was it was also easier for me to say, I've got an APT, I can actually go teach at a primary school. Yeah. So there is those allowances there. Um, I, so I then went and started teaching grade threes from me not wanting to <laughs> deal with the little babies. <laughs> deal with the little babies. <laughs> uh, moving into that space, how was it? Did you enjoy it? Um, it was your first job, you started with the little babies that you didn't want. Um, did you enjoy it? It was fun. Okay. I remember, honestly, every time I think about, you know, where I started, mm -hmm. um, that year when I started teaching was the most beautiful year ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe because now I was getting paid and I had money yeah. to do things for myself. <laughs> that would be fun as well. But I think even the waking up, mm -hmm. going to work, yeah. you know, as a young person at that time, yeah. it was refreshing. It was beautiful. It was like, I'm here now, you know, uh, it's time for me to, to now. And especially because at that time I didn't even have res that many responsibilities. Yeah. So going to work was fun. Uh, the environment of the where I started was fun. The, it was young people, um, you know, very friendly young people. And that also contributes, honestly, 
to how you can actually cope in the workspace. Okay. The type of people you work with are very important. Not everyone is actually lucky to get an environment that is that liberated for lack of a better word. But yeah. I was blessed enough to, to get into a space where the people were beautiful to work with. Um, they were all so helpful. Like you never struggled when you had, I had my colleagues around. It was always um, a good space. All right. Um, and my last question is, um, what are you currently doing now? Are you still in the education sector? Are you still teaching your little babies? Or are you with the older ones? What are you doing? What space are you in right now? Okay. So I've downgraded my phase. <laughs> <laughs> From FBT to, you know, grade three. Now, um, I'm in a preschool. <laughs> Yeah, I know this, this is a story for another day. Okay. But I am. Actually, so, it is a story for another day. Yeah. <laughs> we might even have a video on that just for preschool. Yeah, so uh, I'm currently um, a preschool principal for um, a preschool that my partner and I started. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've moved away from being inside the classroom to mm -hmm. now um, managing the classrooms. All right, is there anything that you'd like to add on just um, anything regarding Bachelor of Education? Any advice you have for anyone who would be watching this? Um, this is a free space, <laughs> safe space, <laughs> where we can just talk <laughs> no, and advise an them. <laughs> you are an adult, <laughs> as long as you have experiences yeah. and stuff. So is there anything that you'd like to add just, like, you know, if you would... To I think to maybe, maybe not. I don't know if it's advice or what, but I think one of the things that I, do, I, I tend to get, you know, concerned about is people getting into the education space because it, they didn't have any other option, yeah. because they feel like you know they are stuck. So now education is available for them to get into. Yeah. Um, then they tend to not do it passionately. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't. Yeah. So I think don't. It's, it's, yes, even if you do take it, you know, as your second option, whatever option it is, but at least invest in it. Yeah. Invest yeah. a bit of love in it. Yeah. Invest a bit of care in it because mm -hmm. you are dealing with people's lives. You are dealing with little human beings. You are dealing with the future generation. Mm -hmm. And the role that you play as their educator, which is more than just an educator, actually. You are their psychologist, their friend, yeah. their mentor. So there are so many roles and capes that you wear that you need to ensure that you present yourself in the best possible way. Yeah. You are a role model to these young people and the things that you say to them, the things that you do to them have long lasting impacts mm. um, on how they view life, on how they mm. actually continue with it. Like, it, it. It's very, very crucial that you ensure that the time that you invest in it, there's a bit of love, there's a bit of care because you are dealing with very delicate yeah. No. No. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> wow. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a way to end it. Yeah. It, it, it is very yeah. important uh, on how you deal with these students because something that you might do to them right now or words that you say to them right now might affect them and in the future and how you know they're so twenty years to come. And you can all you can you can already see in some of the educators who don't really <laughs> love their jobs and how they conduct themselves. So I think it's very important that you bring this up. And uh, with that said, thank you so much you. for being my first guest of Tackling Careers with Arahone. <laughs> and for the viewers, thank you so much for watching. Um, I will be coming back with more of these videos, but today was solely based on Bachelor of Education. Um, if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask, please drop them. I will answer them. I will refer to my guest who specializes in education. I don't really know much about it. And then I'll give you all the answers that you need. So if you want to talk to her directly, her handle on Instagram is at what? Sensmasek. S-E-N-Z-M-A-S-E-K-O. Okay, I'll put, it, I'll, put it, I'll put it there <laughs> and send my circle on Instagram and my Instagram uh, handles at arhone underscore m underscore. I will put all the details as well in the description box for um, if you have questions um, regarding this videos. Also, if you have questions that we didn't answer regarding Bachelor of Education, you can also ask there. But thank you so much for watching uh, today's video. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!
Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> this is a good guess. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>